Action the Eve service of unity being sponsored by the uh, Bar Springs Edwardsville Ministerial Fellowship. So we welcome each and every one of you to demonstrate through our prayers that we are in unity no matter what our uh, political aspirations or affiliations might happen to be. We're going to begin this evening by singing the song which is on the back of your uh, orders of service here. They'll know we are Christians by our love. Okay? We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that all unity may one day be restored. And they'll know we are love by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Then we'll work with each other. We will work side by side. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. And we'll guard each man's dignity and save each man's pride. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Good evening, everyone. I am Pastor David Flanoy, pastor of the Church of the Living God, located at 300 North Garfield Street in Bonner Springs, Kansas. And we're here gathered tonight because we're united in Christ, Kansas City or Edwardsville. We're united one with the other by Christ's love. And, and, and regardless of what the outcome is on Tuesday, we do know that on Wednesday, the person that's taking care of us on Monday and Tuesday will also take care of us on Wednesday, is that correct? And, and so we, we want to make sure that we're united in Christ's love. Not only the ministers are united, not only is the community united, but all saints are united. I got a whole lot of red in me because Jesus' blood covered my sins. I got a whole lot of blue in me because Jesus Christ took my sins and threw them in the deep blue sea of forgetfulness. And so I got a whole lot of red and blue in me and it makes no difference which way we vote, we're all on the same side. That's why we're gathered here tonight, to make sure that we all are, are praying for the, for the safety and the health of this community because families are divided, churches are divided, and communities are divided. We want to make sure that we show our unity in Christ's love. Outside of Christ, there is no unity. And, and, and I don't care how you vote, Christ is the one. We want to make sure that we know that Christ is the one who is taking care of us. Not red, not blue, but it is Jesus Christ who takes care of us day by day, and we will lean and depend on him as we always have, and not on necessarily an elected official. I help coming from the Lord who have made heaven and earth. Is that right? And so we're going to stick with that. We're not going to, uh, we're not going to fret. We're not going to wring our hands. The Bible says in Psalms 19 that some trust in chariots and some trust in horses. But we're going to remember the name of our Lord. Amen. Amen. And with that being said, we're going to get ready and call up Leanne. Amen. Thank you so much. Let us stay united. I am thrilled to see all of you out tonight. Let's just let's just praise God for a minute with applause. God commands us through Jesus Christ to love one another. In baptism, we promise to seek and serve Christ in the Christ in all persons, loving our neighbors as ourselves, to strive for justice and peace and to respect the dignity of every human being as a bearer of the image and likeness of God. We'll now honor those promises and pray for our nation on the eve 
of our national and local elections. Pray for wise and just leaders and pray for the needs of others throughout our country and throughout our world. Please join me in a litany of unity among us and all our community by responding to the end of each section ending in, in your mercy with, hear our prayer. Let us pray together in unity. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. O oh God, who made the world and everything in it, we pray with one voice, proclaiming your presence to all the earth. We seek you, Lord, humbled by our privilege to approach you with our hearts broken by this division we see daily in our news and in our community and even in our churches. We pray for relief from fear and anxiety that has surrounded us for these several months. Grant us courage to be an instrument of your healing love. Make us believe that love is possible in all scenarios. God who pursues us in your mercy. The second commandment is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Lord, help us examine ourselves for prejudice, hate, harshness, closed-mindedness, and judgment. Help us to examine how we initiate and respond in all forms of a communication to see if it's pleasing to you. We pray for continued blessing on all peacemakers, on leaders who value peace, on, on everyone who promotes unity, not conflict, between individuals, groups, and countries. We pray for a speedy end to all violence and warfare around the world. God of peace and gentleness in your mercy. And the king will answer them, truly, I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it unto me. Lord, we pray for the strength of heart and compassion of mind to look beyond ourselves and address the needs of our brothers and sisters in this community, for our poor and lonely, for those who have lost hope, for those who struggle daily for basic needs, for those whose mental health does not allow flourishing, for those who struggle with addiction or chronic pain, we pray that we may embrace the most vulnerable members of our society with the heart of Jesus, God of compassion in your mercy. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Lord, we are so very blessed by your presence and your power. May thankfulness grow in our hearts for your tender care and for the opportunity to lead meaningful lives in every circumstance we find ourselves. May we unite our hearts and minds in joyful praise and humble gratitude. God of abundance and generosity, in your mercy. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And all God's people said.
next up, we have uh, a, a, just a, a time when any of our faith leaders here who would like to uh, come and take the mic, uh, take two, three minutes and share a little bit of your heart, uh, why you're here, how you understand God to be calling you at this time. Uh, I invite anybody here uh, who wants to share to, to come forward now. You're, you're a good one to start with, Mike. Thank you, Andy. Last week, last week, as I was reading uh, the scriptures, I uh, came across a verse that I, I felt God laid on my heart to speak tonight. And uh, now I just pray for eyes to see. <laughs> the words after after solomon after after solomon dedicated the new temple and god appeared to him god appeared to him and he said if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then i will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. God's expectation for the Israelites are the same for us. The Apostle Paul in his letter to the Corinthians states that we are children of God through our faith in Christ Jesus. So our unity, our common bond is Christ and we are called by his name. Therefore, we are to humble ourselves and recognize God as our provider, our healer, our sustainer, our savior. Only God can heal our nation and unite us, not a political party or a person. Now don't misunderstand what I'm saying. We must vote tomorrow. It is our God-given freedom. But we must stand united in Christ. Even though we have different thoughts, beliefs, and desires, we must never turn those differences into hatred. My prayer tonight is that we are humble people that seek the face of God in prayer and that our prayers are heard tonight. We must continue to seek God's forgiveness and turn from our sin. We pray that Almighty God will see and hear our prayers and heal our land. I'm Pastor Catherine from the Bonner Strings Methodist Church, and I don't know about you all, but what I keep hearing is, I am afraid, I am overwhelmed, there is so much tension in the air, and our God is not a God of those things, our God is a God of peace, and, and so the word on my heart tonight is a reminder of this prayer written by Reinhold Niebuhr, a theologian, in the middle of the war, World War II. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. Tomorrow, we're going to have to accept whatever comes. And that's going to be hard for many of us, but God and God's vision for our world and the kingdom of God is so much bigger than we know. Tomorrow, we're going to have to find God's peace. And at some moments, it might feel elusive. We might be feeling fire in our veins because we're not so pleased with what happens and what we have to accept, but God's peace is there. If we slow down, if we wait in the silence, God will meet us there, and I believe that. And the last thing I want to remind us of is that we're called to have the courage to make change. I don't care who is in office tomorrow at the local or the national level. There's a reason God has always had prophets in our world. There is going to be enough left undone, regardless of who's leading, that we are going to be called to lead for justice and we are going to be called to lead for peace as we always are. And we can't forget that when tomorrow comes. And so I just want to encourage everybody, tomorrow is a time to get your house in order. Tonight's the time to get your house in order, to have your soul rooted in the peace of Christ so that when tomorrow comes, you can stand up for peace and for justice and continue to do the work that God calls you to do, to love our neighbor. Jesus says, love one another, no matter what, 
love one another. I want to leave you guys with a, a verse that I hope comes to mind tomorrow for you all. Jesus left us with these words, my peace I leave you, my peace I give you, I do not give as the world gives, so do not be troubled. Amen. Amen. Ooh, I'm already cheering up. Um, I just want to say thank you, everybody, for being here tonight. This is really cool. Um, this is Charles, by the way, and I'm Jordan Michael Mackey. Um, regardless of tomorrow's outcome, uh, I'd just like to remind everybody that we've been put on the map. Um, Bonner Springs is now uh, a powerhouse in the Kansas electorate, regardless of which party it is. Uh, we're seen as leaders in the community because of our faith. Uh, because of our churches, the number of churches we have, the number of church leaders, um, because of our, our council, our mayor, and the way that we run things and the way that we do things in Bonner Springs has now become a, uh, a pillar in the District 3. Um, I've heard that from elected leaders all up and down the ballot, left, right, it doesn't matter. Um, so i just like to remind everybody, regardless of what the outcome is tomorrow, hold your head high because Bonner is now on the map and people are looking to you for leadership and guidance. Um, oh, once again, thank you everybody. It's pretty awesome to see this. And for everybody that set it up, thank you. I am returning to say that I met last week or week before last with Pastor Andy and Pastor Leanne. And we found out that our vision is much greater than our division. Our vision of good schools, our visions of good neighborhoods, our visions of good communities, our visions of being treated right. We've come to find out that our vision is much greater than our division. And as I leave you, I want to leave with Romans 8 and 31. And it says, what should we say to these things? And these things that all the news and everyone is all worried about. The Bible says, what should we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Thank you so much. Hi, guys. I'm Chaplain Polly Stock. And glad to be here as part of the community of Bonner Springs. Closer? Can you hear me now? And I just wanted to remind everybody of this when um, Jesus was leaving. It was at the time of the departure for the crucifixion. He reminded them that the Holy Spirit, the advocate, the comforter, the spirit of truth was going to be with us. So we are not alone. And what that means is that the Holy Spirit comes alongside us with strength, with strength. And I think that's so important that we're not alone, that the spirit is with us in strength. And so when you feel defeated and you feel frustrated, we are not orphans and we are not alone. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding in all of your ways if you would acknowledge him. What we've lost is trust. The people we trust let us down, but the person who told us to trust him, we halfway do. We better trust. Tomorrow's got enough worries of its own. Anxiety is taking tomorrow's problems and put them in today. But this God that we serve, he's calling us back. He's calling his people back. For if my people better call by my name, if we would act right, the whole rest of the world could be crazy. 
But if we would act like we got some sense, That's right. somebody over there would want to know what we're doing. Them Christians over there, they getting along. They having dinners together. They eating together and unpacking stuff together. What in the world's going on? I want to be part of that group. That's right. Me too. This group that's representing our father. That's right. Till he comes back. Amen. I'm Melvin Jarrett. I'm with Christ First Ministry. Amen. Anybody else want to jump up and say anything? Uh, please, I don't want to follow Melva. My gosh, that's like, <laughs> I, that's like my nightmare. <laughs> good word, Melva. Good word. Amen. Well, uh, I get to be, I get to be the closer here, Melva. I think we should have put you as a closer, but I, I get to be, um, I was thinking a lot about this and what I wanted to say to you guys today. I was thinking about, uh, what started this journey for me <laughs> of stepping outside of the partisan walls and stepping into a different vision of what could be. I think back four years ago, and I was in the middle of that election cycle, and I found myself in a moment, I, I, it came to me. I knew what I was feeling. I was feeling hatred. In my heart, I was feeling hatred. I'm a pastor, right? I'm supposed to call people to love, and in my own heart, I was feeling hate. <laughs> I didn't know what to do with that. I didn't. I knew it was not in line with who God was calling me to be. And so I started. I started my best trying to listen, trying to come together, trying to make sense of things that before seemed like a, just a totally bad. And I met God in that place. That's why we're here tonight. We're here to listen to our other Christian brothers and sisters. We're here to not let things that are not important drive us to hate. We're here to love and to stand up in Christ's love, to be that picture to the world. And it's easy to hate sometimes. It is. I had somebody come to me the other day and say, how can I still be friends with somebody that doesn't wear a mask? How can I be friends with them? They're killing people. I've had other people come to my office and say, how can I be friends with somebody who would vote for a Democrat? They're pro-choice. They're killing people. Both sides are saying the other side are killing people. It's hard to be friends with somebody that's killing people, isn't it? But guess what? God's grace covers us. The way I like to think about it, there's a lot of us right now that are pretty wrong-headed about some things, right? The best I can do is look at my brothers and sisters and say, even if I think they're wrong-headed, maybe they're right-hearted right now. Maybe they're trying their best to try to figure things out and find God's love. What more can we ask from people, right? So today, we are people who are broken and flawed, who stand before God and each other, who can admit that. Say, we don't know everything. Say, we don't have it all figured out. Say, our heads aren't on all the way straight, but you know what? We're trying. We're standing here together saying we want something different. We want to be together. We want to share in Christ's love. That's what we're here for. So I was thinking, what does the Bible say about this, right? I didn't have to think too hard about it because a lot of things started popping into my head. The book of Acts, right off the bat, this is when the church is starting. They were to hold all things in common, hold all things in common. Now that's a pretty high standard, right? All right. I thought about Galatians, no Jew or Greek, slave or free, male or female. There's not those things in Christ. There's not Republican or Democrat, right? I was thinking of 1 Corinthians, a whole book, but it starts off in the first chapter. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another and what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. That's a pretty high bar, isn't it? Let's just settle for at least being civil with each other and trying to make it right now. Can I get an amen on that? Yeah. We see this constant call in our, in our world around us to division. So many things that are trying to drive us apart. It's easy to do that, right? Another thing I was thinking, what if an alien came down, didn't even know how the human body worked, okay? They said, you guys have to drink water, like every day? Wait, like more than once a day you have to drink water? 
Now that just sounds like such a pain. I couldn't do that. I could never bear that, right? We say like, well, no, that's just what we do, right? That's how our bodies keep going. It's important to our survival, so we do it, right? We build a whole infrastructure to get water piped into our houses, right? It's important, so we do it, right? What is the water right now in our Christian, in our Christian community? We have to be united. That is essential. That's why we're here. Because we can't keep being the body of Christ if we keep tripping over ourselves, right? We need that water, the water of God's Holy Spirit to pour out on us to give us new life. It is essential to our being as the body of Christ, and that's why we stand here today. We need to stay united as a church. We need to be still and know that God is God. So tonight, we're going to light some candles together. And we're going to say we don't have everything figured out, but this is a symbol that God has brought us together. The same fire that rested on the heads of those at Pentecost that brought all sorts of crazy people together. That symbol will be in our hands tonight saying we are going to stand united in Christ as the church to show people God's love and unity. So today, I invite you guys, grab your candles. We're going to pass around a light and we're going to sing. And we have one song listed on the back of this thing. But I encourage you guys, sing as long as the Spirit calls you to sing, okay? Charles, I'm going to ask you to come up, please. Those of you at home, grab a candle. Join us on this. And I am Charles Grant. I'm a retired pastor. I live over at Edwardsville and hop out up at the United Methodist Church here in Bonner. Okay. Uh, we have two verses have the song here we'll sing through those and then maybe if you know them we'll go through the other two verses of uh they'll know we are christians by our love okay as our candle of light spreads amongst us let us begin we are one in the spirit we are one in the lord we are one in the spirit we are one in the lord and we pray that all unity may one day be restored and they'll know we are christians by our love by our love yes they'll know we are christians by our love we will work with each other we will work side by side we will work with each other we will work side by side and we'll guard each man's dignity and save each man's pride and they'll know we are christians by our love by our love yes they'll know we are christians by our love we will walk with each other we will walk hand in hand we will walk with each other we will walk hand in hand and together we'll spread them news that god is in our land and they'll know we are christians by our love by our love they will know we are christians by our love and all praise to the father who makes us one and all praise to christ jesus the one the only son and all praise to the spirit who will mark us one and they'll know we are christians by our love by our love yes they'll know we are christians by our love amen
So friends, as we leave this place, uh, I invite you to remember where our help comes from. I lift my eyes up to the hills from where does my help come from? From the Lord. That's right. It doesn't come from the Republican Party or the Democrat Party. It comes from the Lord. So as you leave this place, hold that close to you. Seek God with your heart. Be united in Christ. Love one another. Amen. Please, please take time before you leave tonight to thank uh, uh, Reverend Leander Tar Newbert from First Christian Church, Reverend David Flanoy and his wife Brenda from the Church of the Living God, and welcome them to our community. They are new uh, to our community. And Reverend Andy and Catherine Frazier from First Methodist Church, thank them for what they've done tonight. They've put in a lot of hard work. Thank you all very much.